Bethel, it's amazing to see you all. Hope you enjoyed Sunday. Thank you for bearing with us with all the technical stuff. Hopefully it's going to get better as time goes along. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Um, just sorry to the ladies who haven't had your Mother's Day gifts yet. Obviously now with the lockdown, we're not going to be able to do those just now. So please bear with us and just sorry that you haven't had them. Um, it's been amazing to see the love and the care and the praying that's been going on on WhatsApp and, and people phoning each other and shopping. Um, Jesus is really helping that to grow and he's really at work during this time. So let's really thank him. It's amazing to see. It's so refreshing uh, between us all. And let's keep praying for his spirit to help us uh, during this difficult time. George is my cameraman for today. Say hi, George. Hi. So uh, he's going to be following us around. I'm going to be doing a bit of drawing in a minute and everything, just so you can see what's happening. Um, but let's pray before we start. Father in heaven, we just thank you for sending Jesus. And we pray, Lord, you would speak to us this morning. Please lift our eyes back up onto Jesus. Help us by the power of your spirit to be so lifted up, so encouraged today, Lord, as your people. Amen. Amen. So probably last night you saw Boris on the TV uh, listening to his speech, telling us basically what's going to be shut. Everything is going to be on lockdown. Uh, the shops, many of them are going to be shut. The libraries are going to be shut. Sports centres are going to be shut. Uh, houses are going to be shut. Uh, it's difficult, isn't it, L trying to listen and get your head round everything that he was saying. Maybe you're nervous, really nervous this morning. Maybe you're worried. How am I going to cope? How are we going to get through this time? How long is it going to be for? I just feel trapped. Maybe, maybe for it's just prison. It's like a dungeon. Is it ever going to end? And um, just reminded me of Jeremiah in the Bible. Uh, when he, he had a terrible life for so much of his life because he loved Jesus, because he trusted in Jesus and in chapter 33 in Jeremiah, he was confined. He was held prisoner in a courtyard. He couldn't go out. He was trapped. He was held prisoner. Everything was shut down for Jeremiah. It was a horrible time for him because he was faithful to Jesus. Um, sounds exactly like what we're facing now. So we're going to come over onto the, onto the bit of paper and we're going to draw uh, just so you can follow along more clearly. So here's, here's Jeremiah and he speaks the word of Jesus really powerfully. Um, and he had friends like we've got friends. He had family. He had work. He had shopping. All these different things, and yet he got locked in this courtyard. That's where he had to stay. Everything shut down for him. Friends, he couldn't see friends anymore. Some of his family, he couldn't see any of them. Maybe you find yourself in that situation, and it's so painful. Work, couldn't go out, to, couldn't do any of these things. All of these things were shut down to him. At one point, we're even told he was in a well up to his waist, in mud. There was no way he could go anywhere. It was like a prison, was like a dungeon. He was on lockdown. Everything had been taken away. That's how it felt. And in the middle of all that, no way forward, no way backwards, no way left, no way right, no way down, no way out. And how's it going to end? He couldn't see a way forward. In the middle of all that, in chapter 33, Jesus says to Jeremiah, call to me and I will answer you. And I'll show you great and unsearchable things you did not know. What an encouragement for today. Jeremiah is stuck. He's a prisoner in the courtyard. Just come back onto the drawing, George. He's a prisoner in, his, in the courtyard. He's stuck. Everything's on shutdown. Everything's locked down. But Jesus says, 
All of heaven is open to you, Jeremiah. And he saw that in a way maybe never seen before. Everything else was shut. Everything else. But Jesus says, I am not shut down. Heaven is not shut down. My father is not shut down. He doesn't slumber. He doesn't sleep. He's always available. Now call to me and I will answer you. I'll show you incredible things, Jeremiah, that you never knew before. What an amazing thing. We can call on Jesus today. All of heaven. And that's what we're going to be praying today. That even though everything else is shut down, you would see that all of heaven remains open to you if you've trusted in Jesus. I've noticed some of you are doing uh, like a drawing challenge. There's loads of stuff going around on WhatsApp about drawing challenges, Lego challenges. Well, yesterday it was to draw a self-portrait. Here's mine. Yeah, you can see I'm rubbish at self-portraits. <laughs> you can probably tell it's me, but it looks like some evil robot version of me. I'm rubbish at self-portraits. But it got me thinking of an incredible drawing that is my absolute favourite drawing in the Bible, which really helps us to see that heaven stays open. And this is really what I want to encourage you with. Have you seen this before? Have you called on Jesus to see this? This is my favourite drawing. There it is. You might be thinking, what is that? That is a bird's eye view of the tabernacle. Now, Jesus called Moses up on the mountain and he showed him into heaven and he showed him how heaven and earth all worked, how he was in control of everything, how it all interacted and worked together. And he said, when you go back down the mountain, Moses, make this model of everything so my people that I love can understand everything about this world they need to know and so they can know me. So in this model that Moses made, you had a throne made of gold. The king of kings sat on. And then you had a table with bread laid out, fresh bread, 12 bits of bread laid out. And then you had a lampstand. And as the church travelled through the desert, Jesus said to Moses, carry these bits of furniture and then when you stop to camp, put them down on the sand. Now that's not how we build a house, is it? We build the walls first and everything else and then we get our furniture in and we decorate it all. But that's not what Jesus said. I, he said, I want you to see something amazing. These three bits of furniture represent God. They show who God is. You've got God the Father on his throne. You've got Jesus, the bread of life, who's come down to this world to feed us with himself, to give us the life of God in our souls. And then you've got this lampstand, this Holy Spirit, who lights the way to Jesus so we can taste of him and be brought to the Father. And God says, I want you to put these three bits of furniture down in the desert before anything else to show you before anything else was made. I was there. Father, Son and Spirit, one God in this loving, amazing relationship where God loved Jesus forever and the power of the Spirit. All these amazing things. And then creation is like an outpouring of that love because God wants to share his life and his love that he has for Jesus with absolutely everybody. It's too good to keep in. And this is where you come in. There's another piece of furniture, the altar of incense. And the Bible says that's like our prayers. So you might be wondering where you fit into all of this. Where do I fit into this world? What is my role at the moment? What hope do I have? Well, this is incredible. It's saying all of heaven is open to you. Listen to what the Bible says. That, if you've trusted in Jesus, this is you. That is where you live right now. And listen to what the Bible says about God the Father. It says, if anyone loves me, 
Jesus says, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. So you might think, oh, I'm in lockdown. I'm locked inside my house. Everything's shut. Jesus says, no way. If you've trusted in me, the father who lives in heaven has come and he's made his home in you. And I have come and I have made my home in your heart. You may be on your own today. You may be thinking physically, I feel just so alone. Jesus says, not true. The father has come and made his home in you. Jesus has come and made his home in your heart. And listen to this. How great is the love the father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. What amazing love God has to send Jesus to pay for our sins so that if we believe in him, they will both come and make their home in our hearts. That is where you live. All of heaven is open to you. Listen about Jesus. God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. I'm on lockdown. Everything's shut. No, Jesus says, well, God says you've been seated with Christ who seat, sat with God in the heavenly realms. You know, I'm sat on my own in the house. I'm sat, just locked down, everything shut. Jesus says, no, God has raised you up to life and he seated you right now. You are joined to Jesus who is sat in heaven. What an amazing truth. Have you seen that? Colossians 3 says, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Oh, I'm locked away in my house. I'm hidden there. No, God says your life is hidden with Christ in God. You're surrounded on every side today by an open heaven because Jesus has spilt his blood. He's that great sacrifice to pay for your sin. And what about the Holy Spirit? Jesus says the counsellor, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I've said to you. So the Holy Spirit is working in your heart today to remind you of everything that Jesus has said. All the truth you need to hear about this situation. Forget all the lies you hear, all the deceit that's going on, all the selfishness. The Holy Spirit has been sent today into your heart to remind you of everything that Jesus has said. But it's better than that. Listen to what Jesus says. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine, Jesus says. And the Spirit takes from what is mine and makes it yours. That's his job. The Holy Spirit is not locked down. He's not shut. He's at work in your heart, taking everything that belongs to Jesus the life that he shares with the Father, the love that he shares with the Father, and is making it yours today. So, our Prime Minister has shut what he can to try and protect us, and we need to listen and do what he's told us to do, to obey the government. But are we really locked down? Are we really confined? Are we really prisoners? Everything else might be shut down. We might be stuck in a well. We might fill up to our waist in mud like poor Jeremiah. But Jesus says, call to me and I will answer you. You have an open heaven. You are surrounded by this living God who fills everything in every way. And if you've trusted in Jesus, you are part of this incredible life and relationship. And it's all open. Every hour, every day, it's never shut. You can call him in, in the middle of the night. If you're stuck in sickness, even when you're facing death, 
which seems so real at the moment. Jesus says, call to me and I will answer you. No wonder in Romans 8, Paul says, I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God that we found in Christ Jesus our Lord. What an amazing truth. Do you know that today? All of heaven is open to you and Jesus says, call to me and I will answer you. And that breathes new life into a verse in the Bible that we're so familiar with. I used to mess around in church with this one. Uh, I don't mess around anymore. I used to mess around, you know, when everyone says, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. I used to sit there as a little kid and I used to, well, what is everyone doing? Why are they looking at each other? And we used to invent this silly little game. Whenever anyone used to say that grace, we used to be like this, looking around there. Seeing how many people did you look at? I looked at 30. I looked at 25. I used to mess around and be silly. But doesn't that bring new life after what we've seen today? And let's make that our closing prayer in this encouraging message today. For you, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forevermore. Amen. See you all soon. God bless. Bye-bye.